High School Volleyball Night on Channel 12. Tonight, a Northwest Suburban Conference match featuring Maple Grove and fifth-ranked Champlin Park. Hello and welcome to Champlin Park High School. John Jacobson and Andy Gugersberg. And Andy, Maple Grove, four and two on the season. Haven't played in any tournaments yet. Champlin Park coming in nine and two to tonight's match. Yeah, both teams are going to be very well tested by the end of the season. Champlin went heavy. They went down to Marshall in the grind that is the Southwest Challenge, uh, where they play a lot of the best teams in the state, both Metro teams and outstate teams. Uh, came out fourth in that tournament, uh, losing to Prior Lake and then to Section 4 Wyzetta in the third place match. Uh, Maple Grove, uh, a whole lot of single matches so far. Uh, their two losses are in five sets to two pretty good teams. So it's hard to tell what those losses are going to mean down the road. Champlain Park, the defending section and conference champion. They are, along with Blaine, are the only teams that are unbeaten so far in conference matches. And until somebody proves otherwise, you know, the Rebels are the team to beat this year again. Absolutely true. With players like Sidney Hilly, Janae Alderson, and the cast that John always seems to put together, um, they're, the, they're the cream of the crop. They're the team to beat. Uh, talking to coaches in the conference, John is very, very good at taking his key players and giving them the, the monster share, but then getting his role players to buy into whatever they need to do to get their team to the state tournament, and I think he'll do it again this year. Whereas Champlain Park has pretty much all of their team back from last year. Maple Grove, a mix of players who are varsity players and girls who are just playing varsity for the first time this year. But overall, they have done pretty good, and they've got some good talent, Sean Haugen's squad. Sean Haugen's squad does a great job. You know, they're definitely feeling the lack of Amber Domengue. Uh, I think she was a five-year starter, four-year starter, excuse me. Um, doing, played the libero position and played it better than anybody in the North Metro that I can remember. Um, Ball control was a little suspect when I watched them play a couple times this year. If they can shore that up, they're going to be a team to beat, not just in the conference, but in section play. Let's look at our key players tonight, starting with Maple Grove and Lauren Bright, a senior. She'll be playing at Lehigh next year. Lauren Bright is one of the fastest vertical middles I've ever seen play the game at the high school level. She gets off the ground so fast, and her and Paige Aspen have been playing year-round together for the last three years. So needless to say, when one of them's inhaling, the other one's exhaling, they find each other in situations you normally wouldn't see a middle get the ball, but Paige is able to find her there with ease, and she's able to put the ball down with some authority. And for Champlain Park, an All-State player already and just a junior heading to Wisconsin in a couple of years, Sydney Hilly. Sydney Hilly, without a doubt, the best player in the state this year. She does everything better than everybody else. Uh, without a doubt, the best setter. Her attacking is on par with some of the best we've ever seen in this state. She carves apart defenses. She makes blockers look silly. Her serve frustrates people. There isn't a skill in the game that she doesn't excel at. Should be a good one tonight. Maple Grove looking to up and the fifth ranked Crimson. We'll take a break and come back and start our first set. Maple Grove, Champlain Park Volleyball next on 12 Sports. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Pretty much a good day for me would be people leaving their hands off of me. I'm always called names. Um, everywhere that I go, there's always someone um, calling me names, calling me gay. I've been choked, thrown up against a wall, punched. Nobody's ever tried to help me. My new mom and I have a lot in common. Ah, <sighs> the great outside. We both love the outdoors. It's so shiny. That's not a flower. We both love geology. Oh, look. An igneous one. That's not a rock. And she knows a lot about wildlife. <gasps> a labradoodle. <laughs> That's not a dog. Hanging out has been kind of fun. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are.
We are back at Champlin Park High School getting ready for Maple Grove Champlin Park volleyball tonight. Good crowd section on hand there for Champlin Park. You saw in that last shot as Rebels and the Crimson complete their warm ups. Yeah, good warm up from the uh, student section of Champlin. Saw them stretching, getting loose. Don't want to see anybody pull anything uh, early in the season like this. Champlin students travel well. Um, I was at the Sido Classic in uh, Hopkins at the end of August, and I line judged their epic match against Prior Lake, and I chose the side uh, with the Champlin student section, mainly because uh, the other person that was line judging, uh, I had a feeling was going to be a little more frail than I, and uh, I was entertained throughout the entire match. They know the game inside and out. Very intelligent group. Let's look at the starters for tonight for Sean Haugen and the Maple Grove Crimson. Alex Freed is a freshman and an outside hitter. Paige Hinsey wears number 13. She's a sophomore outside hitter. Alex Otto is a senior middle hitter. Lauren Bright, we talked about in the pregame, senior middle as well. Katie Dalcato, a senior right side hitter. Paige Aspinwall is a senior in their setter this year. And then libero is Mary Peterson, who is also a senior for Champlin Park. Sydney Hilly, setter and an outside hitter. She is just a junior. Maria Claflin, a junior middle, six foot tall middle for Champlin Park. Caitlin Weimer Skirch is their libero. She is just a freshman. Marissa Vattendahl Vidal, an outside hitter, is a junior. Janae Alderson is a senior. Middle and outside hitter. Izzy Ashburn is the setter. Izzy is just a freshman, and Hannah Krimble, a junior, middle and a right side hitter for the Rebels. We'll take another timeout. We'll come back and be ready to start tonight's match. Champlin Park and Maple Grove on 12 Sports in a moment. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Volunteering is more than just a word. It's a window to opportunities. Take Mark, for example. By taking free TV classes at Northwest Community Television, Mark is helping bring entertainment and information to his community along with building a foundation of skills that will take him one step closer to his dreams. Share your passion. Visit nwct.org. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? To be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look! Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. They want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one. Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov.
We're about set for volleyball tonight. Champlain Park and Maple Grove and Andy Maple Grove definitely the underdog tonight. What do they need to do to be able to pull an upset? Well, first and foremost, they've got to take care of the ball on their side of the net. If they're able to get their middles involved, they stand a chance. Uh, they're also going to need to play pretty flawless volleyball against the best player in the state right now in Sydney Hilly and uh, her counterpart, Janae Alderson. Those two players are going to rack up a ton of points. And uh, I think if, if you're Maple Grove, you got to make sure that nobody else hurts you, including your own team. You've got to make sure you're playing clean on your side, taking advantage of the opportunities you're giving you're getting and doing the little things better than your opponent. And for the Rebels, uh, they're the, obviously the, the favorite and they know that going in. For you, John Yunker and, and, the, and this team, their goals are beyond the conference. They're looking at the state tournament, getting back there. They finished fifth last year. They'd like to finish higher this year. Try to keep the focus during the year, during these September matches to keep you headed in the right direction. Absolutely true. You know, it takes it takes a slip up or two and suddenly you're not hosting the section semifinals. Suddenly you're going to a YZ or you're going to a Blaine or you're going someplace else instead of spending the last big match at a home potential site in your own gym. So you don't want to you don't want to slip up. You don't want to look past this. John said uh, he had a nice conversation with his players uh, that the conference schedule for them gets tougher and tougher as the year goes on. So they got to make sure they're taking care of each opponent and respecting each opponent day in and day out. Uh, look for a very focused effort from the Rebels tonight as they uh, go out and look businesslike. You know, we've I've, I've been watching a lot of volleyball this fall and you, you use the phrase underdog and favorite and this year more than any other year, those words mean very little. Um, I, th I think the first match I did of the year was Hopkins and Orono. And right. on paper, Hopkins should have rolled through that match. Uh, didn't quite have it up and uh, lost the match as a result. Here we see Sean Haugen in uh, his third year, right, John? Yeah, third year as head coach. Been with the program overall seven years. Has been playing strong volleyball. Now it's It'll be a challenge tonight, but he, he said he, you got to look beyond tonight. He's telling your team, and you, you, you're not expected necessarily to win, but you want to play well. Mm -hmm. and, and when you play tough competition and top-notch competition like they are going to be tonight, yeah, you get a, you get a team like Champlin. This is a chance where where you're not going to be allowed to get away with things. I know, I know. In talking with high-end coaches, that's what they always talk about in a match like this. Maple Grove can get away with some stuff against some of the lesser competition that they saw early in the season, but an overpass here or an undisciplined transition in free ball is going to cost them a point or two. Champlain Park 5-0 and in conference matches so far. One half game in front of Blaine is the only other unbeaten team in the league. Osseo and Totino Grace one game back and Maple Grove in a group of teams at 3-2. and two. Two games back of the Rebels in conference matches coming into play this week. Playing tonight, taking on Tutino Grace, which yep. should be a good match. Yeah, I remember last year we did one of the last regular season matches, and there was like seven teams that still had a chance to win right. the conference title if things fell the right way. And uh, and I think this year is going to be another one of those. I think it's. Uh, Champlin doesn't play Blaine until the very end of the conference season, if memory serves. So those two could be undefeated running into it, but there's got a lot of teams, including Totino and Maple Grove, that got something to say about that before too long. Melissa Peterson of Maple Grove will get us started with the first serve of the night. Here's Sydney Hilly tapping it over the block. Aspen Wall for Bright, cross court. Weimer Skirch, it's Alderson with the attack. Aspen wall up in the air, left side, and it's a point from Maple Grove. And a kill for Paige Hinsey, a sophomore. Yeah, if we can get if we can hear names other than Bright early, uh, that's gonna be very beneficial for Maple Grove here. Hinsey does a good job reaching up and going into the deep five for a point there. Caitlin Weimer Skirch on the serve receive there. Pushed across by Marissa Vattendahl Vidal. Here's Hilly, block! Right, getting up and blocking that with Aspenwell. And it's 2-0 Maple Grove. In, in the chess game that is volleyball, we'll notice here there's a late switch. At the beginning, Bright was staying on the right side. They switch over. Hilly thinks she's going to have Aspenwell as the middle blocker. 
right there and takes a big clamp on it. Peterson serve misses, and Champlain Park has its first point that way. They're down two to one. Marissa Battendahl Vidal, one of the players who was a starter regular for them last year, gets her first serve of the night. Aspen Wall getting it to Bright. Alderson to Hilly. Dug up nicely, back row by Peterson. Swing by Hinsey. Hilly controlled that. Go back to Hilly. And misses wide on the left side. It's 3-1 Maple Grove. And now Bright to serve. It's a good serve. Hilly able to handle it. Pushed over by Krimble. Double contact to call there. You know, you look at you look at Champlin right now, and with the way they're able to maximize Hilly and Alderson, their serve receive looks a little different compared to what you typically see. You got the setter coming from the middle back position here. We go back to Hilly. That's dug up by Bright. Swung across and miscommunication between Alderson and Weimer skirts there. It goes awry and. It's a good start for Maple Grove. They're up 5-1. Yeah, if they can continue to score some points with Bright in the back row, that's going to be very advantageous for them. Uh, both middles can do some really nice things, but uh, it's really Lauren Bright's show when she's here. And Bright serves. Ashburn getting it to Crimble. And Champlin Park gets its second point. First kill tonight for Krimble. It's five to two. Whitney Anderson is in. She will serve here. Hinsey left side handled by Weimer Skirch. Here's Alderson. Aspen Wall across Hinsey. Came to her a lot, and the sophomore comes through with another kill. Yeah, good ball here from Aspen. Well, gets it out on the pin. Hinsey does a great job working hard in transition. Goes off the block of Hilly. Aspen Wall, the senior setter, who leads the conference so far in set assists. Missed on that serve, though, and it's 6-3. Coach Sean Haugen not excited about that missed serve. Uh, I've got to keep the pressure on when you have the lead against the, one of the top teams in the state. Now Hilly getting set to serve for the first time at the service line tonight. And this is long. 7-3 Grove. Kinsey back to serve. Hilly to Alderson. Aspen Wall able to handle that. Bumps this one over. Front row Hilly outside Alderson off the antenna. Maple Grove point. Now eight to three, Crimson. Hilly for Alderson got on top of that one and gets her first kill of the match. Weimer Skirch to serve. Aspen Wall left side. This time it's Lexi Preed. And in the middle, Alderson for Champlin Park. And a Grove player in the net. And another Rebels point. Had a chance to spend the weekend Saturday with Aspen Wall and uh, was giving her a hard time. Her defense uh, was a little lackluster in the last match I saw. She uh, took that to heart. She's had three nice digs already in this match early. Uh, really honkered in. Nice to see a setter playing a little bit of defense there. Good stuff. Mary Peterson serving. Here's Alderson. And a 
nice set, and Janae got on top of that ball. Makes it nine to six. Alderson here is gonna get a, a pretty good look at this ball with a late block coming. You can't lose a Janae Alderson, especially when Hilly's in the back row setting her. If they're both in the front row, maybe, but uh, you, if you only got one of those two to worry about, you've gotta know where she is. Bright with the swing and the kill. Makes a 10-6, Maple Grove. Allie Hensey is the younger sister of Paige Hensey, number 13, in to serve for the first time in this match. Hilly back set, attack across by Allie Miller. And it's a point for Champlain Park. Izzy Ashburn back in, she'll serve. We've had a chance to see Champlin Park a little bit. What's your impressions of, of the freshman, Ashford, who does some setting along with Hilly? You know, I she's so smooth. She's she's like we talked about in the pregame. She's a role player, and she knows her job. Her job is to get the ball to those two kids and uh, make sure she's uh, putting her hitters in good position like she does right here. Hilly got that across. Aspen Wall. Set blocked. Crimson nicely recover. Back to Hilly again, and gets blocked by Bright. Another good block from Lauren Bright, it's 11-10. Yeah, Hilly gets sucked inside here. She gets set a 32, but doesn't get out wide enough to actually see what's happening. So she's forced to hit directly into Bright and Aspinwall. Melissa Peterson missed on her serve. Right back to Champlin Park on the side out, 11 to 9 now. Patton Dalvidal back to serve. Here's Hinsey, Paige Hinsey. Her hit was long. And the Rebels back to within a point. And Maple Grove from the start here in this first set. Champlin Park looking to get on track. Ball dug up nicely by Mary Peterson. Here's Paige Hinsey off of Trimble and a crimson point. Hinsey kind of swinging relentless right there. I like that. She wasn't in a great spot. The set was a little tight, but she's just going to unload here and beat through the block. Very good swing by her. Well, it was one thing that Sean Hogan said to us. So we need to serve aggressively. Maybe not too that aggressive, like on service <laughs> error there. And it hit aggressively, meaning you can't play tentative against Champlain Park and hope to win. Right. Their bigs are going to take some big swings, so when you get your opportunities, you got to go for it. And they did that early here. They're still up 12-11. Whitney Anderson serve. Aspen Wall to Hinsey. Ball playing left side for Alderson. Dug up nicely, Aspen Wall will tap it over. Hilly in the middle. Alderson taking a set from Ashburn and puts it away. Alderson there, after she jumps to block, great transition footwork. They get it back to her, and she goes where nobody is. That's a great cross-court swing by her. So we're tied at 12. Aspen Wall, another good set, but missed hit by Hinsey. And Champlain Park has its... Lead at 13 to 12, it's first lead. Anderson floating a serve over Aspen Wall and a missed time on the jump in the, from Otto. Aspen Wall unable to time that right and Alexa Otto missing and now it's 14 12 Rebels. Yeah, a tough spot for that one. Set was a little bit too high. Not a good serve by Anderson and ace this time. Anderson doing a great job. You know, she's she, her job right now, come in, serve tough. And she's doing just that, putting her team on a four-point run. Goes a little deeper this time. Bright able to get it. Aspen Wall. Got the set. Hit across. Hilly. With the attack. Gets their set from Ashburn. The Rebels getting into a groove a little bit here now, Andy. It's 16 to 12. Yeah, good transition opportunity here. Hilly with a great swing goes over the block there and down for the kill. 
Might be timeout time here for the Crimson pretty quick. Ah, not quite yet, side out. Hensey with the kill, 16-13. That's been Wall. Back to serve it. Crimson need a run here. Here's Alderson. This time floating it over. Aspen Wall. Left hand swing and Delcato able to get it across. Alderson again for the Rebels. Here's Aspen Wall. Paige Hinsey over. Front row. Ashburn hit deep and down. Four point for Champ One Park by Maria Claflin. Claflin does a great job there. The set's a little tight. She goes up and finds hands, goes off the hands off the back end of the court. Now we have Champlin Park in essentially a one hitter situation here. Maple Grove needs to find out where Alderson's swinging and make sure they get four hands in front of her. Lift called on that. Uh, Set attempt and it's 18 13. Until he's second serve of the first set. Back row handled by Hilly, who comes right to the front. Alderson handling the overpass. Now she'll attack again and score. Point. Sean Hobbit's going to get a timeout. Yeah, Alderson just able to take advantage of opportunities. She's up getting big swings early and uh, putting the ball down. Um, it's it's one of those things. Alderson plays a lot of middle uh, for high school and a lot for club. And you can see it right now. Watch how fast she gets off the net, gets herself available. She picks up that ball, works really hard to get deep and wide, and then comes in. And it's really through no fault of the middle blocker over there. Uh, Otto's doing a good job. She's closed, but there's just so much angle that Alderson can hit from that position on the court. Not a lot that uh, that she can do. So what we're what we're probably going to see off of Maple Grove right here, look for uh, either Bright out of the back row, or I would like to see Otto come behind and work behind and see if we can stress Alderson that way. He talked about Alderson, the way she gets herself in position. Is, is, is that a, something work, players work on or just something that I mean, coaches work on that not all players maybe get, but she understands the, the need for it? it? When you coach at the, at the, at the higher end, at the, at, at the Northwest Suburban Conference side of things, one of the things just what every coach in this conference is going to be telling their setters is if your middle is working hard in transition, give them the ball because it's hard to defend. So she's been working that hard for a long time, and now she's getting the payback on it. Back out of the timeout. Rebels now leading by six. Hilly, too strong on that hit. The Crimson will get the serve back and need a run of their own here. Paige Hinsey to serve. The, uh, the attack Hilly ideal seemed to work on that ball. She takes the first ball. She can't run the offense and uh, had herself a little hitting here. Claflin couldn't get to that ball. The goal is an ace for Maple Grove. 19-15. Hilly for Alderson. Pushing it from Aspinwall, the nice dig. Knocked over by Otto. Here's Hilly for Alderson again. Blocked back. Alderson reacted quickly. Nice job to get dig that ball up. And she ends up with a kill. Yeah, slight difference in that block attempt by Otto that she actually connected. She got herself stopped and got over the net instead of trying to go high. Alderson's hitting a little bit above tape right now, not as high as she can, so that press is going to be very important if you're going to get hands in front of Alderson. Weimer skirts misses on the serve. It's 20 to 16. Rebels by four. Crimson serving Mary Peterson. Senior libero putting it in play. Dug up by Weimer skirts. Hilly and hit over by Batten Dolph at all. Minor skirts with a good dig off the hit from Preed. And down on the rebel side, a point for Maple Grove. 
dug off the net. Hilly doesn't get her feet set. That's uh, that's not the cleanest ball I've seen Hilly put up, and uh, Alderson gets herself in trouble, gets blocked there. Crimson within three. At the net, easy tap over for Bright on the overpass. 20 to 18. The never quit Crimson fighting back here. Alderson, get it up front. That all the doll too strong. Now it's 20 to 19. Timeout, Champlin Park. Yeah, just calming the troops down a little bit here. Is it just me or did Yunker let his hair grow out? He looks a little slicker than uh, the last time we saw him. I think you're right. He's uh, got a good look. Just got his degree um, from, I, can't, I think it was Missouri State. He got an online degree from there. So uh, congratulations to him on uh, finishing his collegiate dreams and uh, moving forward from there. But back to the volleyball side of things, I don't know that they need to be doing much different right now. I think they just need to reset and refocus on the little things. Let's get this pass up and off the net. Let Hilly dish the ball and go, go find a way to side out. Get back up by two and then push those last four points to finish. Maple Grove believing they can pull this off right now in a great position. Uh, they just need to make sure, you know, we as coaches talk about after 20, you got to be error free. They're there right now. They are not allowed to make an unforced error the rest of this set if they have a chance of winning it. Peterson's done a nice job of serving, trying to get Crimson tied up at 20. Billy back set to Alderson, and it's off of Hinsey. That's 21-18. Crimble will come back in, replacing Whitney Anderson. There's some more size up front, at Andy, to that Rebels front line. Alderson missed on the serve. Yeah, they got size up front, but uh, this is probably, at least on paper, their weakest rotation with both Hilly and Alderson in the back row. Uh, if Maple Grove puts a push together, it needs to be in this rotation. Hilly's going to get herself in the front row. And I've seen way too many times over the last three years her just take over once she gets back to that position. Oh, crucial, crucial serving error there. Allie Hensey missing. It's back to a two point margin. So the teams exchange service errors. It's Champlin Park leading by two. Izzy Ashburn back to serve. Jump serve back row handled by Mary Peterson. Paige Hinsey, back row, Weimer Skirch got it. Here's Hilly. Cross court handled by Mary Peterson. Comes left side on the swing by Preed. Here's Hilly, blocked back. Nice dig by Weimer Skirch. Right side over by Vattendahl Vidal. Back to the Rebel side again. Hilly gets that one down. Missed wide Misses on the Misses wide oh. on the attack there. Hilly addressing the line judge. I don't know if the protocol on that, but uh, ooh, we got a little net movement there as well. Hilly goes up and just cracks on this ball. Ooh, she may have had an argument there. Instead, it goes to the Crimson. It's 22-21. Pebbles up to scramble on this one, but Alderson oh, gets no. it across and put it over, over that front row. And a dive by Allie Hinsey couldn't get to it, and it's a 23-21 score. Rebels to within two. That is a frustrating ball if you're Sean Haugen. Free ball comes over the net and drops short. Paige Hinsey. Noise the block. Yeah, gets it off the Rebels blockers. Crimson back to within one. Bright serving. In the middle, a little missed time on that. And the Rebels can't connect, and we're tied up at 23. But, uh, that's a freshman set right there. You go to Hilly in that situation and get your team set point. We should see the ball. Ooh, Bright doesn't even let it get over. 24-23, Champlin with set point. Whitney Anderson will try to end this first set.
Aspinall outside for Paige Hinsey over the blockers. He dug up nicely by Ashford. Alderson with the attack. Maple Grove able to get it across. Good job by Paige Hinsey. Here's Alderson again. Back row Aspinall with the set. The swing down for a point. Kill for Alexa Otto. 24 all. Otto with a sigh of relief after that ball hits the ground here. You see her working hard in transition. They're able to get it to her. She goes across Alderson's body and gets that ball to drop. Let's play free volleyball, 24-24. Delcato back in for Maple Grove. Alderson back row, dug up nicely by Peterson. Then the Aspen wall, and then the attack goes long. And the point for the Rebels. Untimely hitting error from the senior there. Six rotation middle blocker. Don't see it a lot, but she's definitely a key piece to the puzzle for the Crimson. Billy serving for the set and gets it. 26-24, Champlain Park wins. It was going to come off Hilly's hand. You just knew it was going to. She comes up with a key ace at the right time, going after an athlete who isn't typically a serve receiver in bright. After she makes an out-of-system hitting error, might have still been sitting on that point. Good choice by uh, the staff or by Hilly to go after the uh, middle blocker there for the for set point. We'll take a break. Champlain Park wins the first set. We're back with more coverage of Northwest Suburban Conference Volleyball and 12 Sports after this. Last summer, my new dad took me on vacation. First, we went deep sea fishing. Wow! I'm so proud of you, son. And then we went on Thunder Shark. That was awesome! Let's go again! Three times. I gotta say, it was pretty cool. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Oh, not again. The world is online, and we're all connected. While there's a lot to explore and discover, we each need to do our part to keep the internet safe. Cybersecurity starts with you. Learn how you can stay safe online at dhs.gov slash stop think connect. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. John Jacobson, Andy Gilgisberg back Gilgisburg at Champlain Park, Park High School. Park first High school. first set goes to the Rebels of Champlain Park, but certainly not easy. 26-24 the final. Yeah, good first set of volleyball. Uh, Maple Grove came out jumping early. They were up by about four or five right out of the chute. Came back and had uh, game tied up and lead taken, uh, and then fought back and got themselves in a position to be alive at the end and just, just fell short. Um, Good fight, first set. We'll see what they come back with on set two. They now know they can play with this team, and uh, we'll see if they're able to do so on set two here. Looks like we spun the rotation, did Maple Grove. Just moved... Uh, Bright to left front to start. She was in right front last set. Let's see if that's the difference. We are underway with uh, set two in the opening serve from Izzy Ashburn and an opening point for the Rebels. Sydney Hilly noticed that Lauren Bright had moved. Great block there by her and uh, Crimble. That'll go the ace 2-0 up one off of Hinsey. 
Hinsey, the sophomore, uh, second year varsity player, getting a little encouragement from Sean there. We'll see how she handles this one. Great pass off the uh, coaching use there. Rebels got the block. They'll go left side again, and this time swinging over the block, but too strong was well, Alexi Preed. And the Rebels have the first three points of the second set. Left side Preed again, blocked down, and it's a Maple Grove point. Good use of the block there. Allie Hinsey rotates in to serve. Alderson the dig. Here's the set. Batten all but all with the kill. Batten all but all does a really nice job of waiting outside the court for that ball and unloading. We'll get another look here. She's deep into the court, gets up, rotates her body through right into the seam between the two defensive players there. That's been the wall, but bright. Nicely done. That's a uh, zero tempo set there. Bright swings, and if the ball doesn't find her, there's no second chance. We can see a look here. See, Bright's already swinging your arm before the ball is set. That's a great, great find by Aspinwall. Melissa Peterson serving. Weimer Skirch on the pass. Set to Hilly. Finds her spot. Point Champlain Park. Hilly with a great swing that time. Anderson serving. Aspen Wall setting it outside for Paige Hinsey down for the kill. Five to three, Rebel. Yeah, good set to the outside, and uh, Hinsey splits the block. Uh, of Hilly and Clough Claflin. Here's Bright to serve. Ashburn for Alderson who pushes it deep, gets the point. Hinsey and Peterson kind of not quite sure who's going to take what scene there. And there you see the Hinseys communicating with each other. Good stuff. Hilly to serve. Hinsey had it over. Hilly. Weimer Skirch set up Alderson. And there's a point for the Rebels. They need to be a blocking adjustment or a uh, defensive adjustment. Oh, we're going to get the libero in, so it'll be a defensive adjustment in order to cover that deep five position. Mary Peterson's back in. Last one off of Hinsey. Ace for Hilly, and it's eight to three. Set one was clean volleyball on both sides. Very few errors. This, uh, this set very error ridden for the Crimson. Outside for Hinsey. Weimer Skirch got it up to Hilly. Over to Alderson. Grove couldn't quite close on the block. Another point for the Rebels. It's 9 3. Champlin Park. Billy looking to keep this going. Front row attack. Dug up nicely by Anderson, and they end up with a point. All started on the play by Whitney Anderson in the back. Look at this again, Andy. Good pick up. Hilly looking like she's going to go outside to Alderson, and as she looks back and sees the libero leaving her base defensive position, dumps it over for the kill. Good dig by Weimer skirts this time, and Alderson's too far outside and can't get it back into play. So Crimson stopped the run there with that hitting error by the Rebels, and it's 10 4. That's been all. She's done a nice job, I think, tonight setting the ball, hasn't she? Yes, yeah, she has. She's done a really good job finding her hitters when they're available, um, defensively doing some nice things, and now we see the service ace. Aspinwall getting some college looks has definitely got the uh, skill set to play at the next level if she wants to. Hilly quick set for Alderson. 
Alderson, who's heading to Providence next year, um, gets on that ball. She's able to hit anywhere along the net. She's a real dynamic attacker, uh, the, type of, the type of player that most teams need to game plan against. Uh, and when you have two of them on one team, it's just, it, it's, a, it's a nightmare. Entering the game, sophomore Brianna Gore to serve. Paige Hinsey, Hilly, able to receive that. Whitney Anderson got it over for Vattendahl Vidal. Here's Aspinall with the set for Paige Hinsey. And a Crimson, or excuse me, a Rebels player in the net. Point Maple Grove. Melissa Peterson out. Lexi Preed back in for Maple Grove. And the serve from Paige Hinzier, team down by five here in the second set. The lead Alderson. Missed wide. Point Maple Grove. Aspinwall puts herself in a great position to know that that ball above her shoulders is going to be out of bounds. Billy Alderson the kill. Tough combination on those when they get the uh, play exactly right on how they want it. Yeah, and that rotation, you've got to serve tougher than that. It's a three point pass. You can know Alderson's getting the ball. That doesn't mean you're going to be able to slow it down. Great swing. Alderson with a good serve gets an ace. 13 7. Good serve, good contact point. Ball just floats. It's a great knuckle movement on it, and Prey doesn't really have much of an option to do anything with it. Aspen Wall outside, a good block up front. Crimble and Allie Miller getting up and blocking the attack from Preed. Rebels doubling up on the Crimson, 14-7 now. And another ace for Alderson. Haugen rearranging his serve receive, trying to figure out new players and who's going to go where and who's going to pass what. Serve receive kind of getting the better of the Crimson right now. They're in a little bit of a conundrum here trying to figure out how to, oh, and we do get them out of this rotation. Aspinwall getting that ball. The Otto is able to tip it in for a point. Serve coming from Mary Peterson. Here's Alderson pushing it across. Billy back and over by Miller. Peterson got it across. Here's Hilly. Left side attack. Dug up nicely by Hinsey. Freed hit. Too strong. Nice little rally, good defensive effort on both sides of the ball. Uh, Haugen's going to make a substitution here, putting uh, Peterson back in the game for Prade. Ashburn serving, her team up by eight. Man, Bright. Weimer Skirch able to dig up the attack from her and then. Champlain Park answers with a hilly left side attack and kill. Yeah, the Crimson lined this ball up perfectly, but it just doesn't matter. Hilly goes over the top of the uh, right side block. Great swing down the line. Aspinwall, again, in decent position, but not enough. 18 to 8. Rebels all over the Crimson right now. Ashburn getting an ace serve. Another good serve. This time the Crimson able to handle it. Oh, nice attack and a swing from Melissa Peterson for the kill. Update from uh, Blaine High School. Totino Grace takes set one 25-23 over there. Here we see a nice set outside. Good swing cross court. Puts it in front of Alderson. Great spot for that swing. Hilly. Attacks, got it down. Cross court and the kill, 19 points now for the Rebels. 
it, it, she just, she hits at such an angle. When you practice defending, you don't worry about seeing a ball attack from that point. So that ball should be out, but because she in contact so high, it's up to down a lot more frequently and, and with a little, a, a, a tougher angle on it. Rebels player in the net, and it's a point for Maple Grove. Side out, makes it 19 to 10. Claflin serving. Excuse me, I'm sorry. It's Alyssa Peterson serving for Maple Grove here. Hilly pushing it across off Hinsey. Peterson back to Hinsey. Holds it deep and catches back line. Good point for the Crimson. So we talk about building the season as, as each, each match goes, and Alderson yells out for that ball, and her libero lets it go. That's a great point to lose at this point in the season. Trusting your teammates is a big deal. Here's Hilly attacking. Dug up by Mary Ooh. Peterson. Over by Hinsey, Alderson. To back Hilly again. Handled by Mary Peterson with a whistle and a center line violation. She was under the net uh, when she transitioned off the net. Point for the Rebels. Whitney Anderson, the senior back in. Anderson went on a nice run in set one. Let's see if she can serve the rest of this one. Aspinwall had to rush for that one. Didn't get the set she wanted to. Having to scramble in the play, and we get a timeout for Maple Grove, and now a 21-11 Rebels lead. At this point, I think Sean's just trying to calm the team down and get them to get a couple points before we switch into set three. Uh, I think this one may be out of reach, although stranger things have happened. Uh, the uh, craziness of rally scoring allows for um, the last team to score to finish it out. Sean right now probably just refocusing his athletes on the game in front of them instead of worrying about all of the all of the stuff that happened to get to 21-11. Nobody on Maple Grove side is happy with anything they did there. Um, they know they've got to play better, cleaner volleyball if they're going to come out and take set three. Just looking for a momentum swing right here. Uh, on the other side, Chamberlain Park probably stay focused, finish this set. One of the things that high school volleyball lends itself to is a 21-11 lead and a final score of 25-22. I, I see it more at the high school level than any other level out there, just an inability to finish off a set. So if Champlin is going to be on that track towards a state tournament run, they need to finish this set. Anderson, a good serve. That was a good way to start it. Andy got out of the timeout, getting an ace, and making it 22-11. I tell you, Anderson has, there's something about her serve that is just tough to handle. She goes on runs every time she's back there. Another tough serve. 23-11. Allie Hinsey kind of shaken up a little bit on that. Didn't quite see how to come in and pass that ball. Uh, see how they uh, recover here. Aspen Wall setting it outside for Bright. Good hustle by Alderson to get it back into play. Or Hilly knocks it over. Here's Hinsey getting blocked. Set goes outside. They'll go to Paige Hinsey again. Alderson takes the set and puts it away. Good defensive effort there by the Rebels especially. And gets them set point at 24-11. And the serve for Anderson to try to close this one out. Bright. Oh, nice recovery by Champlin Park. In the middle of Bright gets a point here. On her second attack of that rally. Alderson does a nice job just keeping that ball alive to get it back over, but Bright knows the opportunities in front of her and gets herself available to finish that point off. Now she'll go back to serve, needing a run. Here's Alderson across. Middle, all Aspen Wall, and it's blocked in the middle on the hit from Otto. Champlain Park able to close in the middle, Andy, and get that final, final point of the set. Yeah, this, this set here, uh, Otto does a good job getting herself available, but um, 
Alderson just gets up a, a lot higher, presses over, the coverage gets sucked in too far, leading to the final point. This one was uh, not the rally, not the volleyball that Maple Grove wanted to see. Champlin feeling pretty comfortable. We'll see what happens when we come back for set three, though. It could be a whole new ball game. We'll take a break, come back with more volleyball on 12 Sports after this timeout. Why not on the go? Channel 12 is online at 12.tv. Watch on your phone, on your tablet. Channel 12 is your local source wherever you go. Just log on to 12.tv. Check out our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and even watch live events via live stream. So don't wait. Stay up to date with Channel 12 and 12.tv, your local source. Sharing your passion starts with taking that first step. Take Will, for example. His first step was taking free TV classes at Northwest Community Television. He's learning production skills and now has access to cutting-edge equipment. He's working on local music productions, meeting new people, and gaining experience needed to produce his own show. Best of all, he's sharing his passion for music with others in his community. Share your passion. Visit nwct.org. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Champlain Park, one set win away from going to 6-0 in the Northwest Suburban Conference, up 2-0 now on Maple Grove following that 25-12 set two victory. Let's look at the top teams from around the uh, state in Minnesota in Class 3A Volleyball. Egan is number one in Prior Lake, Lakeville South, Roseville, Eden Prairie, Champlain Park coming in at number six this week. Just to head up Wyzetta, who started slow. They were up. The Trojans were 0-3 to start the year. Chaska, Rosemont, and Marshall rounding out the top 10. I know polls don't mean anything at this point of the season. It's who's winning in November, but your assessment of that top 10, is that pretty accurate? Yeah, it's Maybe. Out of I mean, time. Let, let me put it this way. There is no accurate top 10. Yeah. Two weeks ago, uh, after the Marshall tournament, I asked my wife, uh, who's the head coach at Blaine, who she had at number one. And the first five teams she named already had a loss. It's just, it's that type of year right now. So you don't know who's, but you, you, Paul gives us something to talk about, right? right, we, right. We've all had conversations. <laughs> anybody in the volleyball world has talked about what 3A looks like this year. It's anybody's game. John Yonker said it himself. There's 10 to 12 teams that could win it all this year if they're playing the right kind of ball at the end of the year. So it's, uh, it's a good arguing point. Uh, right now, Roseville, the only team on that list undefeated. They are one of three teams in Class 3A undefeated with Minneapolis, Washburn, and Grand Rapids. Uh, not teams you really consider in the uh, volleyball powerhouse discussion, but uh, as of right now, that's the kind of parity we'll see in Class 3A this year. Just underway here in the third set. 2-1 now Rebels after the kill from Hannah Krimble. Serve is nice and easy, handled well. Krimble, oh, one-on-one. -on -one. That's a tough spot to put uh, any blocker in. One on one against a 6 3 right side. Whitney Anderson serving. Here's Bright. Gets up and gets the attack. So it's good for Maple Grove there. Not only to get the point, but to limit Anderson to just one serve in that rotation. Yeah, good pass here. And when they're in system, they can find Bright. 
Uh, Alderson, I don't know what she was actually blocking over there. She was way outside of Aspinwall with no hitter on that side of her. Melissa Peterson serves. Cross to Alderson and gets the kill off the Ashburn set. Ashburn, great delivery out there. She put, if you give an outside that location of a set at the high school level, it's going to be hard to slow her down. That's a great set by the freshman. Serve from Hilly. Here's Aspen Wall to Bright. Got blocked up front. Crimson recover. Hinsey getting it off. And down for a point, able to get it off of both Claflin and um, Allie Miller there to get the Crimson point. Now we're tied at three. Here's Alderson off the hilly set. Now it's going to be a point for Champlin Park. Ball's dug up nicely there, but it's a little tight, leaving uh, Aspen Wall in a tough situation to try and get a second contact. Gore back into the game. Uh, Gore's older sister, Taylor, played, uh, I think was a varsity starter for three or four years here, having a nice career down at Winona State. Uh, just a, a competitive, competitive kid. Bree Gore, the sophomore, coming in, serving well here again. Aspen Wall for Hinsey. Block is outside, it's a point for Maple Grove. Just abusing the right side block of Champlin Park. Good unload by uh, Hin or yeah by Hinsey there. Up ref making sure the down ref checking with the scorekeeper to make sure the sub was taken care of. The uh, small details of high school officiating never cease to amaze me. All set for Ooh. Alderson. It just doesn't matter sometimes. That they're in they're in such good rhythm with each other. Uh, Hilly just puts a dime up for Alderson, who can hit anywhere she wants on the court with that set. Rebels up by one. Alderson serving off of Paige Hinsey. Bright getting it back and over by Delcado. And they're hit by Miller as blocked and a point for Maple Grove. Crimson time that right, Otto getting up, and it's 5-5. Creed back in for Maple Grove. Paige Hinsey serving, this one off of Emma Schmidt, who's seeing her first action here in the third set, and that hit off the net. And another Crimson point, making it 6-5, Crimson. A little communication there as Emma Schmidt uh, doesn't quite know whether that's her ball or her teammates. Billy for Crimble, pushing it deep. Hinsey handling it there. There's Preed, another attack. Ball to the middle. Weimer skirt should get it up. Hilly with the attack. Paige Hinsey digs that up. Aspen wall for Bright. Dug up by Weimer skirt. Left side, Schmidt. Good attack, it's gonna be up on the curtain. That's a replay of the point. Bright's ball hitting up in that uh, curtain that's, there it is. Separates the two courts. Often during uh, during the day when they have different levels going in basketball or volleyball. Interesting there on that call. I thought once it broke into the plane of the net, it became the opponent's ball, but uh, we get a replay called there. No complaint from uh, the Champlin bench, so we'll play on. There's a kill by Maria by Ali Miller. Miller very excited about that there. You see the uh, nice dig by Alderson. Hilly reverses at 20 feet. Good deep shot. Bright thought it was out. Uh, Miss Red where that ball was going to drop. Great swing. This one missed on the left side attack from Freed. Champlin Park back in front, seven to six. Ashburn serving. Freed having a little bit of a tough time keeping the ball in front of her this set. Yeah, a miscommunication there as it falls in front of Delcado. Two straight points for the Rebels. Make it eight six. 
Aspenwall's got to go get that ball. That ball's high enough. She's got to go make a move. Aspenwall does get to this one, and then Bright with the swing back for Alderson. Attack from Schmidt, handled by Paige Hinsey, but couldn't get the pass to Aspenwall, and another Rebels point. First kill for Emma Schmidt tonight. We've seen three freshmen have seen the court tonight for uh, Champlain Park as Hilly attacks with some force and gets the kill. Great dig, good delivery, and Hilly unloads to the uh, USA chant. Uh, played with the junior national team this past summer, is that correct, John? It's uh, the world, played in the World Youth Championships down in Peru in August. The team, US team finished second to Italy as uh, planning to try out for the junior Olympic team next year, the junior national team. But had a great experience, she said, and really enjoyed that. And that's, that's her ultimate goal, is to someday be able to play in the Olympics. I've been I've been fortunate enough to know a few girls that have gotten to wear the red, white, and blue in the Olympics, and uh, I don't care what your passion is. If 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 you get that opportunity, it's it's something you'll never you'll never forget. It's it's a once in a lifetime opportunity, and she's the type of athlete with the type of work ethic that can get it done. Kelly getting the kill here puts her team up 11 to eight. And Coach Yonker said she's always working on something to improve her game. Tremendous work ethic to go along with tremendous talent. Block at the net. Crimson handle that. Back it comes and sliding it over as Creed for a Crimson kill. Right now the number two setter in the U.S. is a Minnesota kid. Molly Kreklow uh, played at Blaine and finished her career at Delano. Um, I think would be a great role model for a, for a Sydney Hilly to uh, connect with if she hasn't already. Just good people. Allie Hensey serving. Set goes for Crimble. Dug up by Mary Peterson. Crimson get it over. Weimer Skirch. Give it up to Hilly. Blocked by Bright. One on one and Bright reads the approach angle perfectly. It's a great, great block here. Hilly. Goes up thinking she's got an open net and Bright jumps late and presses over. Back within one. Ashburn outside to Hilly. To the Hilly another kill 12 10 Rebels. You know, as a coach, I'm trying to figure out how I defend Hilly. Whatever shot you take away. She hits the other one. So she's hit about five or six balls at about 14 feet on that sideline. So the libero for Maple Grove goes and stands right there and she hits it deep. It's just, it's a tough spot to be in if you're Maple Grove. Front row, Ashburn for Alderson. It's got to adjust in midair and does a nice job tipping that over. 13 10 Rebels. Senior hitter having a nice night tonight. And here's Whitney Anderson. Hit over by Mary Peterson. Back set to Hilly from Ashburn. Crimson scramble and Paige Alley hits. He gets it over. Ashburn to Hilly set. again. To the middle, and this has to be over for Mary Peterson. It is, but it's too strong. Point Champlain Park, 14-10, Rebels. Izzy Ashburn isn't going to get enough credit for that point. The, uh, the freshman setter does a great job. She sprints to about 14 feet off the net, sets her feet, looks like every, looks like the ball's going outside, and she throws over her shoulder to get that ball to Hilly, who puts it in trouble for the Crimson. Another serve from Anderson. Aspen Wall, Bright, tips it over the block for a point. I think we had an early substitution there. Yeah, we did, and... Uh, Fish out of water as we had, uh, was it Miller? Yeah, Miller in the back row for a point there. That didn't, uh, she didn't look like she was having much fun back there. 14-11, Rebels up, back to serve, number four, Alyssa Peterson. 
Weimer Skirch. And he'll get the dig. Alderson cross court and missed. And it's 14 12. Chip away, chip away, chip away. Peterson, strong serve off the net. Ashburn for Alderson, blocked. And it falls out. Unable to close it and put it back in the court. Point for Champlain Park. They go back up by three. With Hilly serving. Now well, goes an ace. A little hesitation on the serve received by Ali Hinzi. Eighth graders kind of getting uh, getting some work in serve receive. She seems to be a target quite a bit today. Fastman wall back to Bright. Dug up by Hilly. Tough play to the net. Neither Claflin or Alderson able to play it. Point for Maple Grove. Bright will serve her team down three. Alderson on the two ball is the guess. Let's see where she runs. Long run for Hilly to that ball. Got it for Alderson. Back row and then Paige Hinsey gets it over. Hilly across for Alderson. That's a point. And she broke Otto there. Came down biting her lip and pulling her hand. Good swing by Alderson tooling the top of the block there. Four point Rebels lead. Aspenwall, Paige Hinze, and this will be a point. Well, the senior gets the side out for her team. That's set, and there's the kill. Good swing there by Hinze, dropping it in front of Anderson. Monica Peeler into the game for the first time tonight. Lay cross for Schmidt, back row, and a Maple Grove player in the net. And now 18-14 Rebels. Alderson serves, too long. 15-18, Maple Grove needs a run right now if they're going to take this to a fourth set. Going to need some big swings from Preed here. Hinsey to serve. Outside, missed on it. 19-15, Rebels. In to serve will be Izzy Ashburn, 5'9", freshman setter. Impressive serve into the net, Point Maple Grove. And Otto getting, leaving the court and getting looked at by the training staff over there as she rotates off the court. Probably just gonna get a quick tape job if she gets back in. Alderson. This one off Alderson. And the Rebels get it over. Schmidt got it in the middle for Krimble, and then Maple Grove able to get into their offense bright with the attack and kill. Free ball opportunity. You've got to know where Bright is here on the 31, and it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I think we're going to want to double block that. Emma Schmidt's going to want to help out there. Crimson back to within two. Right side, Schmidt got it over. Aspinwall digging it up. Right side hit coming from Peeler. Pushed over. And the Crimson having to scramble here, but able to keep it alive. Ashburn for Hilly. She'll drop it over for a point. Hilly surgical with that two-hand push there. Knows he's got a very small window to get them uncomfortable and finds it. Five points from the match. Schmidt serving. 
Low line drive hand by the Crimson over by Mary Peterson. Ashburn outside to Hilly. Another kill for the junior. Timeout Maple Grove. Crimson coming up will be at Elk River next Tuesday. The host Irondale on Thursday the 1st and then their first tournament of the season coming up on Saturday October 3rd at Hopkins for Champlin Park. They're back into action next Tuesday as well. They'll play at Centennial host Elk River next Thursday the 1st and then a match at Osseo on Tuesday October 6th. Their next tournament comes up the week of October weekend of October 9th and 10th at St. Michael Albertville. Yeah, got a got a lot of season left. I think that's the that's the basic point of that. Uh, this match is uh, is pretty pretty important for Champlin as they want to maintain their undefeated in the conference standings. Uh, Maple Grove, uh, barring a comeback here, probably going to drop to three and three. But it's still it's a lot of season ahead here. Uh, Maple Grove's got some of the some of the un the the non winning conference teams so far. Uh, ahead on their schedule, so they'll be able to pick up a couple more games, and we'll see what they go from there. 21-17 as we come out of the timeout. That one just slipping over the net off the serve from Schmidt. Here's Krimble, handled by Mary Peterson. Aspinwall trying to get it to Peeler, but had a tough run to try to knock that one over and couldn't do it. 22-17, Champlain Park. Smith this time into the net with her serve. Update from Blaine as Totino takes set two, 25-15, and they're up 2-0 on the Blaine Bengals. Looks like by the end of the night, we may have only one unbeaten left. Serve coming from Allie Hinsey. Here's Hilly with the attack and kill. Champa Bark two points away from closing out this match. Alderson handles the ball very well. Nice set, and Hilly just will not be denied tonight. Um, not the all-world performance we've seen in, in the past from her, but more than good enough to win so far tonight. Anderson serves. Mary Peterson floating the return over. Ashburn at the net, and you know, Rebels player. Back, nope. row, back, uh, row. back row block is the call. Crimson keep Champlain, uh, Champlain Mark at 23. It's 23-19. Melissa Peterson serves. Off of Anderson. Here's Hilly pushing it deep. That's a point for Champlain Park. And now one away from winning. Kelly to try to serve for the win here. I mean, she's got to go for it, right? She's got to go for the Absolutely. ace here. Aspen Wall, the bright. Kelly will set to Alderson. And there it is. And Champlain Park wins in three to remain unbeaten in the Northwest Suburban Conference, their sixth conference win of the season. Yeah, we'll watch this whole last point here. Hilly goes goes for it. Uh, the ball's handled pretty well here by Hinsey. Aspinwall doesn't have a whole lot of options. Mishandles that one. Bright puts it over the net. And once the ball gets into Hilly's hands, you kind of know where it's going, and you kind of know that it's going to be over. Uh, Hilly to Alderson has been pretty unstoppable tonight, and uh, it was it's just fitting that that's how the match ended. Uh, good, good-looking Rebels team right now. Uh, definitely the team to beat as it shows with their 6-0 conference standing. Uh, but like we talked about in the beginning, it's not just about winning a conference championship. This team has way bigger goals ahead of them. We'll take a break. Come back and hear from a couple of the Rebels in a moment. You've been watching Northwest Suburban Conference Volleyball on 12 Sports.
There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Volunteering is more than just a word. It's a window to opportunities. Take Mark, for example. By taking free TV classes at Northwest Community Television, Mark is helping bring entertainment and information Test to one, two, community. check one, two, Along one, two. Along with building a foundation of skills that will take him one step closer to his dreams. Share your passion. Visit nwct.org. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. All right, in this spot, you know my motto, safety first. Oh, sure. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? <laughs> to be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Park? Just kidding. Rebels fans see their team win tonight in three straight. First one was close, the next two not so much. And Champlain Park still unbeaten in the Northwest Suburban, Con Northwest Suburban Conference. Let's go back down to the floor in Andy Gugasberg. Welcome back to Champlain Park High School. With me now are uh, Whitney Anderson and Janae Alderson, uh, two of our players of the game. Uh, Whitney, we'll start with you. A couple questions for you. Number one, um, you were part of quite a few great service runs by your team. Tell me what it's like to go back there with the ball in your hand, knowing that you're going to be part of a four or five, or even I think we had one seven point run. What does that feel like for you? It's pretty great just to know that you can go back there and be a strong member of the team and just like contribute your part. Very nice job by you tonight. I love the fact that you stepped in as a defensive player and were able to be definitely a highlight for this team. Um, as a defensive player myself, I just want to say thanks. And uh, on behalf of all of us little people out there, keep up the good work. Thanks. Thank you. Janae, um, hitter, I think, is all we can leave you at as far as position goes. But you did some nice things defensively as well. What's it like to be sitting now 6-0 in the conference? Um, it just it feels pretty nice just to know that we have a pretty good position, but it also just means we have to keep fighting just to keep our spot and know that people may want to knock us off, but it's going to be it's kind of nice just to know we are looking on the up and up. Hey, thanks, Janae. One more thing for you. It seems like every time Sydney's setting and you're hitting, every time that ball leaves her hands, it ends with a point from you. How is that connection so strong? Uh, Sydney and I, we've uh, honestly had a strong bond since we were, she was a freshman and I was a sophomore and we just have a really good connection and she's an amazing setter obviously and she just knows how to get it there and she just knows I'll be there so it's kind of nice to know that a setter just knows you kind of like that. All right, thanks a lot ladies, we appreciate your time. John, back up to you. Thanks Andy, great job as always tonight. Thanks also to Whitney and Janae for taking a few moments to spend some time with us. So with the win, Champlain Park improves to 10 and two overall. They are six and zero oh in the Northwest Suburban Conference. Maple Grove drops to four and three overall, three and three in the conference. That'll do it for our telecast tonight for Andy Gugasberg and all of our crew. Tonight on Fan Appreciation Night at Champlain Park, it's the Rebels in three straight over Maple Grove.